hello. I'm loading the airwaves with Frank Lee Morris. <laughs> I'm gonna attempt a psychological profile on um, Frank Morris, who was the Zodiac killer, along with the Anglin brothers. Uh, they helped him out with the whole thing. Involved in murders all the way back to Black Dahlia in 1945, all the way up to John Benet Ramsey, Bob Crane, and they even uh, were involved in the strange things that happened with O.J. Simpson. And the glove that didn't fit O.J. Simpson fit Frank Lee Morris. I'm not a psychiatrist, okay? I'm a doctor of chiropractic, but I do have limited training in psychiatry as as how it pertains to patients who may present each day in my clinic. I have done some studies myself on these different things that I'm going to talk to you about because, you know, I saw these uh, irregularities in Frank Morris over the course of my lifetime, really. I also want to let you know I dated a psychiatrist when I was in chiropractic college. And she was an expert in abandonment syndrome. And this is a, another thing that he was suffering from. And a, most, a lot of serial, killer, serial killers do suffer from abandonment syndrome. If you read my book and the story about the closet where they locked him away whenever they were mad at him, that really messes up uh, kids' minds. Uh, they have to be around their parents. You can't punish them and then lock them away somewhere. And he claimed that there was a hole in the wall that he would go to hell and visit Satan and come back out being Satan. That's all in my book. Trying to figure out how the all of these different psychological problems, um, you know, relate to him and who he was and how he got that way or can be really complicated. But now I'm going to go over a few of the things that I see. I have them written down here because I can't remember. It's just a lot of... A lot of things and there's a lot more I'll probably remember later I may have to do another video one uh, first thing I have is definitions up here paranoid schizophrenia now schizophrenia the simplest way that I can explain it is they only got one foot in reality okay <laughs> schizophrenia characterized especially by delusions of persecution he was always complaining about how the whole world was out to get him grandiosity delusions of grandeur and that was frank because he was one minute bragging about how you know great he was and then the next minute ah oh, these damn people this and that and they need killing jealousy and by hallucinations chiefly of the auditory nature they hear things he acted like he would hear things sometimes and he would go like this and he'd tell me it was flashbacks from lsd but you know he never told me that he actually heard things, but I just wanted to uh, read this again because where I live, everybody lives in a cesspool of jealousy. It's, And I keep trying to tell them it's a mental illness. And it says right here, schizophrenia is characterized by delusions of persecution, grandiosity, or jealousy, and by hallucinations, chiefly of the auditory nature. Okay? You... you when I was dating a psychiatrist, she said that a lot of these things that I'm going to read to you are on a continuum in a person's personality. You can't just pick one of these things out and say, this is them. And that's the case with Frank Morris, and I'm going to show you how in a minute. The next thing I go over is psychopathy. Psychopath. Uh, we know he was a psychopath because that's what makes murderers psychopathic personalities. But here's the personality. A mentally unstable person. That was Frank, and he had to quench it with drugs and alcohol to think in his own mind that he was stabilizing when he was only making it worse. A person having an egocentric and antisocial personality marked by lack of remorse for one's actions. Definitely egocentric. That's the delusions of grandeur. So you see how we're jumping back and forth from the two different disorders. It's a continuum. Antisocial personality, well, when you have to kill everybody you meet in order to be satisfied, yeah, you're antisocial. <laughs> it's not funny, but it does make me laugh. 
antisocial personality marked by a lack of remorse for one's actions. See, he could kill people and it didn't matter to him. Whereas, you know, sometimes I have to take a second look before I can kill a fly because, uh, you know, I don't want to murder nothing but the little pests. <laughs> He, he, he can kill a person, you know, torture him and watch him suffer and bleed and cry and beg. And it just turns him on sexually. He doesn't even, I mean, remorse is not even in there. Okay, it's also characterized by an absence of empathy for others, which is empathy is when you care about others and their feelings and everything. And that was him. And one time he even told me, I don't know what we were talking about, but he, you know, something about hurting people and all that and I'm like you know what you, that's crazy and why and whatever and he said what difference does it make you're not gonna feel it <laughs> that's in my book you can read that part I forgot what we were talking about at the time but that really stuck with me all, all my life because he told me that when I was a young teenager you know what difference does it make you're not gonna feel it so he's torturing these people in the sake and thinking you know what difference does it make I don't feel it Oh, man, what a sick personality. Uh, Antisocial, let's see here, we're on psychopath. And no empathy. Often criminal tendencies, violent social behavior. Criminal tendencies, yeah, he'd been in and out of prison all of his life for criminal activity. Everything from assault to battery, drugs, prostitutes. Uh, pro uh, they call a man act where he was... I don't know, he was trying to be a pimp is what he told me. It didn't work for him too good. He probably had to kill all of his girls that he worked with. Violent antisocial behavior, you know. I mean, every day was a, him out, him and the Anglins out searching for someone they could do violence to and watch them suffer. Okay, now, that's uh, paranoid schizophrenia and psychopath, psychopathy, psychopath. Oh, the delusions of grandeur of Frank Lee Morris were incredible. Now we're going to go over obsessive compulsive behavior. All of these things are things that I saw in him, and I would diagnose it if I, you know, if I was a psychiatrist, but I'm not. <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder is an anxiety disorder characterized by recurrent obsessions, which means a desire to do something, and compulsions where you act that out and you do it, or both that cause significant distress. I'm sorry, you see me scratching a lot. I have uh, some kind of problem with my liver that causes my skin to itch all the time. Are time consuming and interfere with normal daily functioning. Well, his daily function was to go out and kill people, hunt them down and kill them because he was obsessed about it. He was obsessed with it and had this compulsive disorder to kill people that had to do with the torture that, that they did to him when he was a, a little kid. Now, I'm not making excuses for him. I just want to try and help you understand this guy's mental whatever. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Daily functioning recognized by an individual affected as excessive or unreasonable. So they're so obsessed with this thing, then they behave compulsively about it. And it's unreasonable even to them. They know it's unreasonable, but Frank was always reasoning out that it was normal for him and the Anglin brothers to do this. Now, bipolar disorder, in my opinion, Frank was manic depressive, which is kind of like a bigger bipolar disorder. They swing from, uh, well, let me just read it to you, bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression. So it's the same thing. It's a mental health condition that causes extreme mood swings that include emotional highs, manic or hypomania, and lows, depression. So these people can be really high, which was Frank telling you all these stories about whatever, and then they can go into depression. And I've done some studies on that chemical, chemicals of the brain and what happens when you're in this high state. This may help some of you if you're suffering from bipolar disorder when you're in this high state it feels good because you're pumping adrenaline everywhere in your body and you tend to keep going with it and the thing that you need to do is stop yourself so you can get a more even keel and i'll explain more later well you're 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 full of adrenaline you're high on on everything what happens is your 
adrenals, which produce the adrenaline, get to where they can't produce any more ad adrenaline and they stop. And your body is, when you produce adrenaline, the body produces serotonin. The serotonin balances the adrenaline. Now, uh, they got a lot of new chemicals they're going to tell you about that have to do with this. But this is the old, this was what it was when I studied it about 20 years ago. And it's simple enough for you to understand it. It doesn't need to be more complicated with more chemicals. And the serotonin level in your body will raise to try and lower the amount of adrenaline. But now you have this problem of you used up all the adrenaline. It drops like that. And now you have all this serotonin in your brain, which is a downer type chemical. So that you go into depression. Okay. So people who have uh, bipolar disorder need to concentrate on don't let yourself get too high on the whole thing. Uh, you know, everything, because this happens to them daily. Don't let yourself get too high on things because the depression's coming afterwards. I have something else to say about that, but I wanted to tell you that there was one guy in chiropractic college who was a retired chiropractor who, you know, he was basically cured from manic, from manic depression, bipolar disorder, by me discussing, having this discussion with him. And he told me, he said, you know something and no one's ever explained the way I feel. Uh, they didn't tell him he was manic depressive. He didn't know. He said, no one's ever ex explained to me the way I am in chemical terms that I can understand. Cause he's a doctor. Remember he goes, this is amazing. I'm going to work on this for a while. People at the clinic hated to treat this guy cause he was so up and down, you know, and he'd get angry real easy and everything. And, uh, but when, after I treated him, that, that whole thing went away. People were like, what did you do to him? I said, I just explained to him the, you know, adrenaline serotonin balance thing. That's something you do with your mind. You let your mind go off and, and produce all this adrenaline. Athletes can be good at this because you learn to produce adrenaline so that you can compete. And, uh, if you let it get into your brain, it gives you sort of a high. But anyway, back to bipolar disorder, uh, the formerly called manic depression. It's a mental health condition that causes extreme mood swings that include emotional highs and lows. Now I want to tell you something else that throws a little confusion in there that I can't find anything in the books about. When these people go into depression, they're, you know, they're down. I mean, they start crying and they're just they'll set and but there are a group of people and this doctor that I just told you about was one of them and I uh, know a few of them personally there are people even and this is my opinion okay from what I have seen because I see them in the mania state just like Frank would do and I have seen those people go into depression sometimes the sleep they'll have a sleep disorder which goes with the schizophrenia thing and they will, they'll go off and go to bed and sleep for three days. And there are others, even the same ones, but it could, you know, everybody's different. And some people have multiple ways that they react, but some of them will go on to the mania, mania thing. And then when the depression comes on, they get angry because they don't want to be depressed. And they start producing adrenaline a different way or something. And it's not a high, it's a battle to try and fight the um, the depression that's coming on and these people can be really, really weird, but they're not necessarily murders, murderers. They're just weird people. And, you know, they get some rest and they'll get over it. Stress and, you know, heavy workload at, at work and that kind of thing will kick them off because they don't understand their adrenaline. They get it going and flowing so that they can do their work and it overruns into their brain and they start going into this manic state and then they, you're, they're on that roller coaster. It's a roller coaster of up and down. Adrenaline high, serotonin low. And they're, you know, if you can train them to just keep a level um, personality when they start feeling themselves getting too high, calm it down and you won't go into the depression or the anger. And it works. Now, some of them are so intense and mixed with other things, they need medication. You know, I'm not telling you to get off your medication or change anything that your doctor tells you to do, okay? I'm just telling you my experiences. And to try to understand Frank Morris, because he had all of these things, it, it, there's so much more to his personality that I 
you know, these are the disorders that I can remember. Paranoid schizophrenia, I have all these things written down so that I can add to them as I remember more things about Frank. Paranoid schizophrenia, psychopathy, psychopathic personality, obsessive compulsive disorder, and bipolar disorder. I think I've said enough and I hope that helps you to understand. I had a I had one of my viewers, one of my subscribers who asked me to do this little psychoanalysis and that's why I did it. I hope you all have a really nice day.